guys be running around, so I'm kind of out of breath right now. So, um, so feel free to grab some pizza and some drinks, and you know, when you enjoy the presentation. Um, so, hello, and thank you all for coming to this event. Today, the Asian Culture Team and FISCA have a special guest, Dr. Larry Bowney. He is a professor and researcher in organizational communication from University of Texas at Austin. He consults with companies such as uh, Tokyo Electronic, IBM Applied Materials, AMD Motorola Semantic, Transamerica, and DEC, just to name a few. Dr. Browning is the author of Semantec. Saving the U.S. Semiconductor Industry. His presentation today is based on a chapter in this book which examines communication issues and forthcoming challenges in our industry. We all can benefit from a better communications and collaboration skills. So now let me present Dr. Larry Brown. Please help me. Thank you very much. I will be speaking from the microphone some, but uh, this is not such a large room. Uh, you can hear me in the back, okay? I won't worry about it then and, and uh, uh, kind of speak at will as to what I'm talking about. Uh, first of all, let me explain the title. And since uh, uh, Freescale uh, is an outgrowth of Motorola, and I've spent a fair amount of time in Motorola, as you may know, Motorola was one of the main contributors to Symantec. Um, the, the title of this book really is inaccurate because Semitech did not save the semiconductor industry. The 12 companies, including Motorola, uh, that used the knowledge gained from Semitech is what changed the semiconductor industry in the United States. This title for the book was selected by, guess what, advertising people. I, I, had, a, I had a different title for specifically knowledgeable about what we were actually doing, and they said that won't sell. <laughs> and so they amped it up into a hyperbolic statement that Symantec saved the semiconductor industry, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that's how that got that. Conceptually, and as an argument about data, it's wrong. And it's wrong because Symantec is a semiconductor manufacturing technology group that began in the mid-1980s here in Austin, Texas, to test and develop uh, equipment to be shared by the member companies, including Motorola at the time, to use in manufacturing technology. This came about primarily in the mid-1980s because the U.S. share of uh, market share in, in integrated circuits chips was going down. And the technology, as you may know, was developed primarily here in the United States originally by uh, people like Jeff Kilby from Texas Instruments and Bob Noyce at, uh, at Intel was in fact being taken over and being done better uh, in the Pacific Rim than being done in the United States. So the story that I have to tell, and it is a story, is about a failure in the United States. It was a failure in cooperation between the U.S. semiconductor manufacturers and the supply group that they operated with. What they discovered was that work and that technology was being done better in Asia than it was being done in the United States. That's a short version of the story and the punchline for what I have to tell you about uh, in this examination today. As a part of that, in the mid-1980s, by 1987, Symantec uh, was established. It was brought to Austin, Texas to be a, a manufacturing consortium to test the technology to decide what to do. They weren't certain. One of the things that I will talk about here and later is how their goals changed as their organization developed. Uh, an example of that would be, and probably the most important example, is that Semitech was originally created to overwhelm the Asian competition in the manufacturing of chips. Now, a very important organization is called International Semitech. And that organization contains the many of the countries and the companies that were original opponents in the, in the organization. So if our lessons are how, do, how does an organization's strategy and goals change over time, Symantec would be a good example because it started out with an opponent that ended up being a cooperator and a peer in its, uh, in its future as, as time went on. Let me tell you a little bit how I, about how I did this. Uh, in 1987, Symantec was established. In 1992, they uh, accepted requests for proposals to write a history, a technical history of the organization. 
I made an application for that and received the, uh, the grant to write a book on Symmetech. My uh, primary research methodology is uh, observation of sitting in on meetings uh, and doing depth interviews. I did 60 depth interviews with many of the characters who helped to establish Symmetech and review of documents. And I got access to their library and, and looked at 6,000 documents that had to do with their period of time between 19. 85 and 1992 is essentially when I started this research project. So out of that, I developed this uh, scheme for analyzing and sorting data. And to tell the story that I will be sharing, sharing with you this afternoon, I will be going through a, uh, essentially a chapter out of the book on Symantec, uh, on the lessons learned. I, the, what I have to tell you today is almost directly from that chapter. And so if there are things that are, you would like to see in text, after I finish the, the, the discussion, uh, there are copies here that are available to you. To prove that it wasn't a book, uh, here's the book that, uh, on Symantec, Saving the Semiconductor Industry. Um, I went to the University of Texas as a possible publisher because people wanted to see this work in a university press. They said this isn't the kind of thing we do. But over at a &M, they have a program on the history of organizations. Why don't you contact them? And so I did, and now I have a book published with Texas a and Press. It seemed kind of sensible to me if I'm writing about cooperation than to have the Aggies and the Orange to be cooperating in kind of a symbolic way of saying it. it can happen at university levels as well. Let me begin to, uh, to talk about this, uh, this story. Okay, here are, the, here are the things that come out of this chapter. Uh, early on in Symantec, the reason that it happened was because there was a belief across the U.S. semiconductor industry that this was going to go into tank. The strong belief was is that the decrease in the U.S. presence in chip manufacturing wasn't going to change. There was a belief at, a belief at high levels that, that this was going to be lost, and it was going to be lost completely. Um, so the industry's survival was greatly in danger. There was a fellow from uh, IBM, who was a, obviously a big player at the time and still is, who went around the United States giving a presentation saying we're looking at the gallows. And I don't know whether he had a news connected to that or not. But people literally believed that the end of manufacturing chips in the United States was within, was within their lifetime was going to see it come to an end. So you talk about what causes cooperation to take place. You can talk about leadership, but the great motivator is failure. And there was a strong belief that U.S. manufacturing of a chip was going to come to an end. And people believe that was going to happen, and the high-level scientists believe it was going to happen. And so a strong belief that the, the industry itself was in danger was the reason that this came about. Uh, when I began this study, people talked about each other and the U.S. manufacturing as blood enemies. And that was a common term that was used to describe who each other was and what they were like. So part the reason that I had an interesting story to tell was because I was explaining how the 12 major manufacturers in the United States, which made up about 70 to 75 percent of the industry in 1985, the kind of opposition that there was to each other, how you develop a consortium out of enemies. And so part of the, the drama of the story that I have to tell is how that came about, and that is how the, uh, the consensus came about to transcend bigger. Um The primary model at the time, this was 1985, so this the story that I have to tell you is now essentially a 20-year history in the sense that the, uh, the chip manufacturing is all over the Pacific Rim at this point. But the model at the time was primarily used as a model for how to do this with Japanese. Um, here's, a, here's how that happened. In the United States, the relationship between the chip manufacturers and the supply industry had deteriorated to such a point that the U.S. companies would rather be working with Japanese suppliers and uh, American uh, suppliers would rather be working with Japanese manufacturers. Okay? So that had gotten the distrust between the manufacturing industry and the supply and the resource group to provide the materials and the hardware to make the chips was so that it was completely uh, not working. So 